This is not going to be an in-depth analysis. There will be no developer quotes. I am not here to teach you how Midnight Club 3 came to be. There's plenty of other YouTube videos dissecting exactly how this game was made, and this will not be one of them. I am only here to tell you exactly why this nearly 20 year old racing game is still worth every second of your time. What's cracking, dirt? Look like you got skills, son. You got the attention of the big players, and believe me, that ain't easy. They want to race you for real. Never before, or since for that matter, have I ever had an encounter with a racing game that keeps its metaphorical foot pinned to the gas pedal from the first screen of the main menu to whenever you decide to shut the console off. It is faster than Need for Speed, more chaotic than Forza Horizon, and the only way a video game could cause you to blink fewer times is if it ripped your eyelids off and turned them into a fancy drink umbrella. Midnight Club 3 is in a league of its own. It's the fastest racer to ever exist. Midnight Club 3 was released at the peak of quality illegal street racing games, when movies like The Fast and the Furious were still at least, you know, somewhat about car culture. It really is the summation of every scene in those movies, where somebody hits the nitrous button and they enter warp speed. That's what this game feels like. This is the kind of game you get when a developer puts 100% of their chips into making the gameplay as addicting as possible. Sure, it looks a little rough around the edges, but looks aren't everything. Every blind alley, jump, and four-way intersection feels specifically designed for propelling these literal missiles through them. Every major street feels wider than it should, almost as if the game is begging you to misbehave and drive as erratically as possible. Which you will. I mean, you'll crash into pretty much everything. I hope the cities can write all of these damaged light posts off as a business expense. MC3 drops you straight into the meat and potatoes of any racing game, the racing, without much of an explanation. You meet your local San Diego mechanic and select your first vehicle. It's a simple premise and it works. Is it a story worth remembering from the creators of some of the best single player story modes in gaming? Absolutely not. Are there any memorable characters? No, not really. The story's simple. You get a car, you make car faster, you outrun the competition, buy better car, upgrade car, and finally, win big green shiny Lamborghini car at the end. Put a lot of work into her. She's gonna fly for you. And she's beautiful. Just look at her. And she needs to be driven with respect. That's all the story you need in a racing game, and I'm glad Midnight Club 3 doesn't try to overcomplicate it. MC2 technically had a story focusing around Gina owing some money to the Yakuza, but that story goes absolutely nowhere and you could finish the game without giving it a second thought. A racing game like Gran Turismo will make you feel like you're progressing naturally by getting better at controlling your car around a predetermined track. Midnight Club 3 does the exact opposite. In fact, there's plenty of races where you can get away with not pressing the conventional brake at all and just use throttle control and the e-brake to get you where you need to go. A lot of people say Midnight Club 3 is the hardest in the series, but I don't find that to be true at all. Once you know what you're doing, it's a lot more forgivable of a game than its predecessor. Don't get me wrong, it's still entirely plausible you'll hit an immovable object and have to restart from the beginning. There's still definitely some challenge, but have you played Midnight Club 2? One aspect of the game that's definitely done far better here than before is the bikes. They're still as dangerous to ride as before, but the game eases some of the pain of constantly falling off of it by introducing special abilities. For the bikes, that's Zone. Think of it more like Franklin's ability from GTA 5 if you want a more modern reference. In fact, that's basically where the idea came from. It slows down time and gives you added control in order to weave in and out of traffic. Once you learn how to use zone to your advantage, making your turns look more like actual racing lines, and instead of blindly throwing yourself at a corner and hoping there's nothing there, you're practically unbeatable. There are also two other special abilities in the form of Roar and Aggro. Roar creates a big force field wave that blows all of the traffic and other opponents out of the way, and Aggro turns your car into basically a tank 
with the ability to ram traffic to your heart's content without losing speed. While all three certainly have their uses, Zone is really the one to use all the time. It's by far the most handy. You'll find Zone on the more high performance cars, exotics, bikes and tuners. Uh, you'll find Roar on the muscle cars and choppers, and you'll find Aggro on the luxury sedans, SUVs and trucks. Also, can we just take a minute to step back and just look at some of the little details that I love about this game? I love the feeling of the night atmosphere, especially Detroit. Riding a motorcycle and watching your player's coat flap in the breeze makes it feel eerily similar to the real frigid winters of the American Rust Belt region. Coming from there myself, I can confirm. I love the bright yellow and green flares they use for waypoints and the way that the smoke contrasts against the night sky. I love the light trails that draw against the building and trees, adding to the illusion that you really are outrunning light itself. I love the gauges on the hood and how they remind me of the stock boost gauge on my old 2004 WRX propped on the steering column. This is just one of those games where age doesn't really play a factor in most of it. Sure, the car models have never really been that good looking, especially on things like taillights which can look downright ugly at times. But I don't really care about any of that, because MC3 holds a special place in my heart regardless of whatever flaws it might have. So look folks, the recipe is simple. Two cups of excellent game design, a pinch of ludicrously addicting racing, a smidgen of cocaine, 17 and a half tubs of butter, one excellent soundtrack diced into small bits, and a nice long bake in the Rockstar Games game oven. And you have yourself a delicious experience from start to finish. This is one of the few games I could think of that has such a good sense of speed even the very first race in a completely stock vehicle is riveting. One of the greatest, if not the greatest racing game is no exaggeration. Call it nostalgia goggles, call it me being an old fart reliving his youth, but there's just not really a whole lot wrong with it. I can't explain it any simpler than that. It's just one of those natural 10 out of 10 experiences for me that I'd recommend to anybody regardless of if you're a fan of racing games or not. It's simply sublime. Can't get the help, T-Stace. <laughs> uh, whatever, bad joke.